it's Pete Thorne. Welcome to my studio and welcome to the next video in my Tone Secret series. This one is all about recording and mixing acoustic guitars. So my goal here is basically if you're the type of person that's ever had issues recording acoustic guitars in like a project studio or home studio environment, if you can't get them to sit right in a mix with other instruments like bass and drums, uh, you know, if they're not sounding clear and defined and you're just not happy with the results, well, this video could be for you. I'm going to basically walk you through how I track that song at the beginning of the video. Uh, there's three distinct acoustic guitar parts going on in that song. A six string part, a 12 string part, they're both panned out, and then there's another six string melody part that comes up the middle. And there's also bass and drums, of course, happening. So I want to walk you through uh, how I recorded those guitar parts, how I approached everything from mic technique to EQ to compression in both the recording phase and the mix phase. And hopefully you'll get some tips and tricks from this and it'll help you achieve better results in your own recordings. So a quick note about the mic technique in this video, I'm going real simple, one microphone mono, and that's for a couple different reasons. You can see me do it in the song at the beginning, just one mic up on the guitar. Nine times out of 10, that's how I record guitar anyway. Uh, a couple different reasons for that. Um, when you're your own engineer doing stereo miking on an acoustic, it's really difficult, I find. You're listening to the guitar through headphones and hearing the microphones. You're also hearing the sound coming directly out of the guitar. You can't hear things like phase relationships correctly and microphone distance. And So I find it's just safest to generally stick with one uh, mono microphone and figure out where to place that as, to the best of your ability by listening through the headphones. Uh, number two, um, you know, the mid side and X, Y and stereo mic techniques and things like that. Really, you only need to do that in the context of recording a guitar, uh, where the part needs to really live on its own with maybe just a vocal or maybe, you know, minimal other instruments going on. You want the acoustic guitar to really be featured in full and stereo, uh, even in a big studio, if you're recording guitar in a pop or a country or rock song. Uh, and you know, there's going to be other instruments going on. Generally, they don't want the acoustic to be stereo. They're going to want that to be a mono source that they can then pan out and place in the mix somewhere. And that's just in my experience and in my opinion, that's what I find. But so anyway, in this particular video, we're going to stick to the one mono kind of uh, uh, microphone, very simple. So another huge consideration when recording acoustic guitar is, of course, the microphone, both the type of microphone you're using and where you place it. Uh, so because we're doing this sort of the simplest way to record acoustic guitar, which is just a single mono microphone, this is relatively easy to demonstrate. And I can show you what I usually do. Um, so the mic I have here is a Mojave MA200 large diaphragm tube microphone. Uh, you know, there's plenty of, of examples of large diaphragm condenser microphones and tube microphones being used on acoustic guitars way back to the, you know, you see pictures of the Beatles using them in the 60s and the Stones and stuff like that. It's a really cool sound. I really like small diaphragm mics on acoustic guitar as well. Um, my favorite is a Neumann Cam 184 that I've ever used in the studio. And whenever I can, I use one of those in the recording studio. It just always sounds great to me. Uh, but I don't own one. So one of these days I'll get one. Uh, so for now, we're going to work with my trusty MA200, which is a terrific microphone. Uh, so I'm just going to move around a little bit here in front of the mic so you can hear some different microphone positions. <laughs> Okay, so you probably noticed when I get up in front of the sound hole of the guitar, of course, you got all that energy coming out of there and the low end increases and it gets a little big, a little huge sounding, um, especially if, you know, you're going to want a guitar to sit in a mix with other instruments. So if you're recording with, you know, you, you know, bass and drums going on or any other guitar parts, you don't need all that energy and low end coming out of the guitar. If it's going to be a solo uh, acoustic guitar kind of thing, it's possible that you might want a little bit more of that action going on. You might, might want to be a little closer to the sound hole. But generally what I do, especially if there's other instruments going on in like a rock track or something, I place the microphone about a foot back from the guitar and I want it to be about kind of where the neck meets the body, just maybe a little bit closer to the sound hole than that, but somewhere around the 15th, 16th, 17th fret, something like that is a really, really good bet as far as where to place the microphone. And like I say, about a foot of distance from the guitar to the mic is, is, is generally where I'm at. Kind of right in that zone, just works for me. Once again, over closer to the sound hole. It just gets boomy and inarticulate over there. It's, it's not, not working for me, so. Yeah, so that's my general trick, especially when you're gonna fit a guitar into a track, foot back, 
right around where the neck meets the body. Start there and see what you hear. So quickly, I wanna address a really big factor when recording acoustic guitar. This is something that gets overlooked all the time, and I think it's a really, really huge deal, actually. And it's the cheapest piece of gear that you can possibly get to switch up your tone, and that's the type of guitar pick you're using when you're recording. Uh, the guitar pick will have a massive overall effect, actually, on the, the overall tone, the attack, uh, and uh, sometimes it, it can almost sound like you're using a compressor or not, depending on the type of guitar pick you use and the thickness of the pick. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, here's pick number one. I'm going to contrast a couple different picks here. Okay, and here's a completely different guitar pick. Okay, so you can really hear that this white pick, this is a Paul Gilbert pick from Mr. Big. <laughs> I'm not sure how this ended up in my pick collection, but um, this, this pick has a lot more articulation and sort of almost scoops out the mids a little bit in the, t in the tonal department to me. I think this is a Tortex pick, maybe uh, from Dunlop. I, b I believe it's a uh, probably about a 60 millimeter. Uh, it's, you know, bendable, kind of a medium gauge Tortex. And then uh, this dark pick here, this black uh, Dunlop, this is a USA Nylon Dunlop one millimeter. And yeah, generally these Nylon Dunlops, I find they sound warmer and they have a real nice kind of like subdued, sort of more mellow tone. So if you're sort of strumming and you don't want the, the too much pick attack to poke through, they can work really well. Generally, I would use this one or an 88 or a 73 gauge. Uh, those ones are the gray ones, so check out some of those. Um, but sort of moral of the story is it's really good to have a wide selection of picks around, uh, especially when you're uh, cutting acoustic guitar parts, to and just see what sounds the best. You know, try different ones, and they're almost like a like an EQ slash you know um, attack. Uh, uh, thing that you can switch up really, really easily. So for the the Martin part at the beginning, uh, first guitar part you hear in the song, I used the uh, the Tortex, the Paul Gilbert pick, uh, to to get lots of nice attack and make that part poke through. For the twelve string rhythm guitar part, I actually used the Dunlop one millimeter, this uh, black nylon pick here. Uh, I figured a twelve string had lots of sparkle. Why not kind of like maybe you know give it some mids and not give it too much attack and just get some contrast. For the little um, sort of melody part, what I did is use one of these Dunlop prime tone picks. I really like these actually on electric guitar too, and they got kind of a cool grip on them. But this was almost like a combination of both of them tonally. <laughs> and for the lead part, you know, it just had a nice kind of articulation. Here's the nylon in contrast. I mean, it just sounds like way, way less attacky to me, less articulation on the front end of the note. And especially in a track where you got drums going and stuff and two other acoustic guitars going, I felt like I wanted the, the melody part to really poke through and yet sound full. So the prime tone seemed like the right choice. So moral of the story, um, you know, the type of pick that you use uh, can have a big overall effect on the sound. So this video is really going to feature the UAD SSL 4000 E series channel strip plugin. I used it to track all the guitar parts, and I'm also using it in my DAW in the mix to um, do EQ, compression, and all that kind of good stuff on every single part, the guitars, the bass, the drums. It just sounds terrific, and basically what it does is it perfectly recreates, including the microphone preamp, uh, an entire channel strip of a classic SSL 4000 console. Uh, now, this is the console that when it came out, it basically revolutionized mixing. Guys like Bob Clearmount and learned how to play this thing like an instrument. And it, basically, if you had one of these consoles, you almost really didn't need any outboard, at least not compression and EQ, because the, each channel strip is so full featured. There's full parametric EQ, there's uh, low and high shelf filters, there's also full compression and expansion on every single channel, as well as a terrific sounding microphone preamp. So let's talk a little bit about how I set up the SSL 4000 E series channel strip plugin to record the acoustic guitar. So um, I'm speaking through it right now, I should mention as well, um, and I've got it set basically exactly the same as I did when I was tracking the guitar parts. So on channel four in UAD console, it's inserted on the unison input. So that means it's doing stuff in the analog world as well. Uh, I'm tracking through it, using it as a microphone preamp essentially. And when it's in the unison slot, it's doing things in the analog world like recalibrating the impedance, for example, of the XLR input that the mic is plugged into to match the original SSL hardware and get really, really close to the sound of one of those classic consoles. So that's really cool. Now, specifically for acoustic guitar, 
Uh, let's talk about the filters for a second. I'm using the high pass filter and I'm rolling off everything below about 70 hertz. And that's because it's really useless on acoustic guitar. It's just gonna create extra energy and mud in the track. So I've got the, the you can see it, a picture of it there on your screen. I've got the uh, high pass filter set at about 70. Uh, now I've got the compression in and I should mention that on the, on the filter, I've also got the uh, pre-dynamic switch set in okay so the reason for that is if the filter is pre-dynamics what that means is it's going to filter that low end before you hit the compressor and that's a good thing because maybe you lay into the guitar and hit the string hard and you get like a big low end kind of plosive thing going that can make your compressor dive down really quick and kind of sound unnatural so if you set that pre-dynamics that can be a good thing for the acoustic i find um, now, I'm compressing just a little bit uh, at about a 3 to 1 ratio and at about minus 15 uh, with a fast release, minus 15 threshold I should say. Um, what I'm getting is just a, like 3 dB of gain reduction while I was recording these acoustic guitars uh, on the loudest you know, pick attacks. I like to think that um, it's probably the best thing to do to not compress and EQ guitars acoustic guitars too much when you're tracking, especially if you're acting as your own engineer. And the reason is because you can't reverse whatever you're doing. It can be difficult to hear things like compression when you're tracking through headphones. Um, you know, you might, you know, get to the mix stage and go, wow, I really added a lot of compression to that guitar and I couldn't tell. And it's always stuff that you can add later on. So I was just compressing a little bit and just knocking off the peaks. So it's, is it, I guess what I'm saying is it's best to uh, use compression uh, and equalization uh, really, really sparingly when you're tracking guitars and you're serving as your own engineer. It's just not, not that safe. Uh, so EQ, in, in that spirit, I didn't use any EQ. So when you're hearing these guitar parts, let's take a listen to a couple of these different guitar parts right now. And this is with um, you know, no EQ or anything like that. This is just recording through the SSL plugin with that low end roll off at 70, little bit of compression, and that's all that's going on. Okay, so those raw recorded guitar tones came out really good. It's very happy with them, no EQ or anything like that. They sound great. Now, moving forward to the mix, they're gonna need a little bit of love in order to, you know, three guitar parts fighting for your kind of sonic attention and uh, as well as bass and drums in there. So what I wanna do is now show you what the, those guitar parts sound like without any EQ or compression. And then I'm gonna add the SSL E-Series channel strip uh, with the compression and equalization that I used in the mix. And then we're gonna break it down. I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you can hear how those guitar parts really get lost without any EQ or compression, especially in the mix context. But as soon as I turn on the SSL 4000 E-Series channel strip plug-in and I add some nice EQ and compression, they jump right up to the front of the mix. They sound really nice and polished. So let's talk about what I'm doing here. 
basically, number one, I'm using the legacy version of the plugin while I'm mixing here. So on each of the three guitar parts, I've got one of these plugins inserted on the channel strip and logic. Um, the reason I'm using the legacy version is because it saves on some DSP and I don't need the microphone preamp, which is what the full version of the plugin has. I used the mic pre when we were recording, but we don't need it now. So, uh, so legacy version helps save on the little DSP and the UAD Apollo. So that's nice. Uh, okay, so starting with the filter, I'm rolling off at 70 once again, just rolling off everything below the super low subby frequencies. You don't need that stuff, so I'm just making sure it's all gone out of the out of, out of the guitar tone uh, because it just creates mud in a mix, and you don't need it. Uh, now uh, the dynamics section, just using the compressor, and I'm compressing a little bit more aggressively than I was for sure when I was recording because now I can hear it, and mess with it. And there's no danger. So I've got the threshold set at about minus 18, about a 2.5 to one ratio going, and I got a medium fast release setting basically. Uh, so what I wanna do now is play you with no EQ. I'm gonna turn off the EQ section of the plugin. I'm just gonna play you the main Martin guitar part, and I wanna turn the compression on and off so that you can hear exactly what the compressor's doing. Okay, so let's talk a bit about EQ now. So I learned a long time ago that subtractive EQ is where you should start. So what that means is you cut before you boost. Cut out some offending frequencies, see the sound that you're left with, and then if you've got a boost from there, go ahead and do that. Uh, so I find with acoustic guitars, many times I wanna cut some low mids. And the way I figure out the low frequency or low mid frequency that I wanna cut is I actually boost up the low mid band. So you turn it up, uh, you know, plus 10 dB, let's say, and then you sweep the frequency range, excuse me, frequency range on that low mid band and you listen for the offending frequency. So I'm gonna show you what the offending frequency I found right now by doing what I just said. I'm gonna boost up the low mids real high and it's at about 230 hertz. So listen to what this sounds like. Alrighty, so you can hear how that's really like bloated and offensive sounding. So I'm just cutting that frequency, which is about 230 hertz, and I'm cutting it, I would say three or four dB, something like that, pretty gentle. And as far as upper mids and uh, top end goes, I'm boosting at 1.5K, which is sort of, I guess, high mids really, and just uh, maybe three dB, something like that. And then also at about 3K, I've got a high shelf going, which means 3K and beyond is just boosting. And that's probably more like four or five dB, something like that, that I'm boosting. So you can see this, the exact settings on your screen there with the picture of the plugin. And let's listen to what this guitar part sounds like soloed now. And I'm gonna just turn the plugin on and off so you can hear the sound without the plugin, the compression EQ and all that stuff. And then with the compression EQ, the final finish sound. Okay, here we go. So for the 12-string guitar part in the right channel, I have the exact same plug-in settings as I did for the uh, six-string Martin part in the left channel, so no need to go over that. Let's move forward to the melody part that comes up up the middle uh, towards the end of the tune. So for this, the number one thing is I'm not actually cutting any low mids. I was playing up high on the neck on the top two strings, so no need to kind of thin it out. If anything, that would be detrimental, I think. So in the low mid band, I'm actually boosting around 900 hertz, just maybe a dB and a half or two dB, just to add some fat kind of mids. Uh, and then I'm adding the exact same upper mids and top end as I was on the other Martin guitar part. So just leaving it full and kind of boosting uh, those upper mids and, and top end sort of treble frequencies. 
Uh, as far as the compression goes, um, what I did was I turned up the input gain of the plug-in, uh, so I was driving the compressor harder, so I'm actually compressing more, because I really wanted the, uh, the to get a little bit of sustain on the melody part and make the, the notes leap out and really come to the forefront of the mix. Uh, so yeah, hitting the compressor kind of hard. Let's let's solo this part, um, and I'm going to turn the plug-in on and off so you can hear exactly the sound with and without the 4000 E-Series plug-in. Here we go. talk about bass and drums just really quick. I recorded the bass guitar through the UAD Ampeg B15 plugin, which is totally killer. I used it in the unison slot of console on channel one. And then I also used the gray LA-2A UAD uh, compressor uh, after that uh, in UAD console to just add a bit of compression. It sounded just great. In the mix, I'm using the full uh, SSL 4000E channel strip plugin, and I've got the Ian Boxel uh, bass guitar preset on, on the, the channel strip in the mix and that just made the bass jump out my bass kind of sucks it's kind of crappy and it really added some clarity and just a little bit of compression the eq was just perfect so i left it exactly as it was on his preset so i used easy drummer for the drums in this song and uh, so it's just coming out of stereo bus and uh, on that drum bus i'm using the uad ssl e channel strip once again and i've got the ian boxel wide drum bus preset going which really added some smack and some nice eq some fullness some top end sounded just great so once again i like this ian boxel guy uh, he does good work and uh, his preset sounded just great to me uh, i'm also using the uad studer a800 uh, actually in front of the ssl plug-in to add a little bit of kind of that analog tape feel and it sounds just great just add some glue to the sound so let's listen to the drum sound now soloed outside of the mix without any plugins and then with both of these plugins added Alrighty then, thanks for watching my video on how to record and mix better acoustic guitar sounds featuring the UAD SSL 4000 E-Series Channel Strip plugin. I hope you were able to garner some good info from this video and you can take it away and use it in your own music however you see fit. And hey, uh, hit subscribe if you haven't, come back and see me for more videos real soon. I am Pete Thorne, take care out there. See ya.